Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier here in the Massachusetts studio. We've got a great special uh, conversation here about cybersecurity with good friend of theCUBE, Naresh Kumar, VP and general manager of product management at Zscaler with some big news uh, happening. Uh, Naresh, great to see you and, and thanks for coming on this special CUBE conversation, cybersecurity conversation. Thanks for having me, John, and it's a pleasure to be here at Cube. It's great to welcome you. Obviously, all the latest tech breakthroughs here on the Cube, and this has been all about cybersecurity. We saw a lot of hacks. Had Microsoft just announced something this past this past week, just on the deadline of this new SEC rule that you have to disclose everything under a certain time period. They snuck it in. Really, kind of just an elementary hack, still making impact. And cybersecurity landscape is constantly being pounded by threats. People are trying to figure things out. And today, you guys are bringing. Uh, as you guys say, game-changing announcement from Zscaler. You guys are a leader in cloud security. You guys pioneered the segment. But this is about disrupting traditional SD-WAN solutions. You guys are taking a different angle on this, announcing a zero trust SaaS solution that's you know, that looking at a thing of the past. What are you guys announcing? What is the news? Why is this news important for you? Tell us what, the, what it is. Yeah, definitely. We are very excited to announce our Zero Trust SASE platform, which is built based on Zero Trust AI capabilities. And what we are specifically announcing and launching is a Zero Trust SD-WAN solution. And it is completely built with Zero Trust principles and thinking to make sure that enterprises can leverage the technology for branch offices, factories, sites, data centers. It's all about bringing zero trust for not just users, beyond users into those IoT OD systems, those printers, those, those cameras, and all the critical infrastructure in the data centers. It's all about bringing zero trust for uh, those endpoints within these branch offices and, and redefining this SD-WAN. Uh, that, that's, that's about the announcement. And as part of this, we are introducing some plug and play appliances with new capabilities, uh, which we are very excited about to talk. So I want to dig into the product uh, product side of its platform, plus there's some hardware here. I want to get into that architecture and the solution. But before we do that, Naresh, can you explain uh, what Zero Trust SASE is and how it differs from traditional SD-WAN security solutions? Yeah. Um, SD-WAN is there for about close to nine or 10 years, right? And, and the SASE is, is relatively a new concept in the past two years, um, where the whole idea is how to bring the network and security capabilities together. Un until now, if you see, the, the entire networking products and solutions were completely deployed in a silo compared to the security products and capabilities. And with the users, uh, going mobile and working from home. And all of this whole hybrid work is here to stay. And with those, the access needs are completely changing. So the assumptions that everybody is going to be in the office behind a perimeter and secure those edges is what traditional SD-WANs are built. And we at Zscaler are taking this a completely fresh look at what this access means. How do we connect these uh, users, these machines in a complete zero trust principles so that customers can take advantage of that end-to-end -end platform capabilities we offer in a true zero trust manner. That's, uh, that's what we, we uh, want to disrupt and solve for our customers. Take us through the problem statement and elaborate more on this benefits of connecting users and locations and clouds through the, this zero trust platform called exchange platform. What's the problem that you guys are solving specifically and how does, that ex and, and, and how does it extend zero trust beyond users? Yeah, a very good question. So let's look at the problem in terms of, if you look at connectivity, so especially if you look at users' connectivity, uh, when they're in office, they're assumed that they go through firewalls, VPNs to connect to the applications in the data center. And with, with all ad adoption in, uh, of uh, uh, SaaS applications and cloud, the applications are not anymore in the data centers. They're completely migrated to the cloud. A and similarly, the user is not anymore sitting in the same office location. They are moving to coffee shops, airports, or even working from home or wherever their choice they want to work from. So you can't have a security and restriction in terms of what they can access 
defined differently in different parts. That's what was happening all along. So th that's, that's where things like remote access VPN or any form of VPN generally uh, bring a lateral threat movement for, from a compromise standpoint. Or even if you were to put a firewall appliances or VPN appliances uh, stretch into the cloud or SaaS applications or wherever you, the, the applications are hosted, you're simply extending the attack surface. So these two fundamental problems of lateral threat movement and attack surface are at the core of any VPN based architecture and approach. And what we saw is that's the same approach everybody out there, especially from a SD-WAN perspective, are using. And what we wanted to uh, solve for customers is how could you bring the traffic uh, without having a need for VPN and get into the platform uh, through Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange so that uh, the user doesn't know where the application is hosted and the application does not know how to reach the user that fundamentally will break the model of giving over privileges, which is all about uh, zero trust uh, uh, approach and philosophy. I really appreciate that. That's a great uh, little masterclass there on the description. Quick follow-up on that, if you don't mind, is what's the use, what's the customer's pain point? What are they feeling? Why would they call you? What's the phone call? What's the email? Hey, I'm having problems with blank. What's the, what's the sign that they're really needing this solution versus uh, are they the frog in boiling water if they're sitting with the old SD-WAN solution? When do they know they need to, to lean into Zscaler's solution and, and portfolio of hardware? What's the, what's the burning yeah. <laughs> symptom, if you will? <laughs> yeah, so um, it's interesting, usually, uh, customers have spent billions of dollars uh, across the decade uh, by putting more firewalls at every time they have a breach. And yet the breaches are rising and, and the attacks are increasing. So oftentimes the first thing customers reach to us is we have this attack, we have this uh, uh, scenario happen, we have all the security in place. Uh, you know, how do we, how do we, uh, how do Zscaler can help solve us, right? And for us at Zscaler, it's all about business risk. So we wanted to look at everything from a perspective of how could we help the customers transform not at just a security layer, but at application layer, at a network layer, because all of these application transformation, security transformation, and network transformation have to work hand in hand very tightly. That is where the whole idea of the foundational approach you take from a connectivity perspective, the cybersecurity and uh, cyber threat protection portfolio we leverage is consistent. So the comprehensive security is what customers look for. I have this user uh, sitting in home or sitting in branch office or coming uh, from uh, uh, a third party location in a B2B scenario. How would I, I have a consistent comprehensive security stack which is applicable to everybody in equal way so that I can prevent and protect the risks from business standpoint. That's the, the triggering point for most of our customers. Okay, so the next natural question is, what's the top use cases organizations have successfully transitioned to from these older methods of SD-WAN and SASE? What were some of the key challenges and benefits they experienced during this transition when you guys looked at ruling this out? What were some of those key, key uh, transition points what were the benefits that they saw? What were the key areas that they, they achieved success in and what challenges did they overcome? Yeah, there are four key use cases, especially from SD-WAN perspective, customers are working with us and we are seeing a significant uh, benefits, uh, which I'll talk about. The first use case is around many customers have this zero trust initiative across the organization, not just for users, but how do, what does zero trust mean for a printer? What does zero trust mean for a set-top box, a feedback kiosk machine? Remember, all of these individual devices are connected to the enterprise network. They are sharing, are part of your network and they're accessing resources. So that's the first thing about, I'm securing these users in a sophisticated way using Zscaler internet access, Zscaler private access and so on. But how do I extend those kind of zero trust capabilities onto these feedback machines, uh, the feedback kiosks or in, uh, printers and cameras? So that's where uh, uh, most of customers are using us in the use case of site-to-site -site VPN replacement because most often times the branch offices talk to data centers, especially for these devices, whether it's a print server or any other type of application. So that's the first use case. The second use case, we see a lot of traction, especially 
lot of global customers do uh, frequently acquisitions and mergers. So in case of these acquisitions, what we see is every time they acquire a, a small company, 5, 10, 30, 50 locations, they have to go through this exercise of redefining their network because you have overlapping IPs, network challenges, uh, everybody built it in a different way. How do I make day one, day two, day zero type of operations much simpler? So we, uh, with Z Zero Trust SD WAN solution, enable customers to significantly reduce those from months to a few days and hours in some scenarios. So that's the second popular use case we see across our customers. And the third use case we see a lot of traction is around secure OT access. Many manufacturing customers, uh, uh, healthcare customers, and, and different verticals constantly work with third-party suppliers. They work with vendors where there is a need for allowing access for those contractors, vendors to some mission critical systems like HVAC systems, building management systems, or things of those nature. So uh, oftentimes, VPN is the solution. They would, they would put a VPN appliance, they give a VPN agent to these contractors and they'll add, uh, connect these two things. And that's exactly where yeah. many supply chain attacks and so on we have seen in the past uh, one year hugely there. So with the, with the solution we offer, customers can uh, si simplify that connectivity in a true zero trust manner. So a lot of benefit for OT access in a secure way, whether it is for a user accessing those applications or a application accessing the application for updates and so on and so forth. And a third, fourth use case, which is very powerful, is zero trust starts with visibility. So a lot of times customers do not know in a branch office how many devices they have, whether it's a printer or it's, it's, it's a, a set-top box, they have no clue. So providing that visibility is the top use case and, and that's uh, one. So these are the top four and of many use cases which customers really get benefited uh, by, by bringing uh, those uh, uh, security to their connect connectivity needs. Thanks for laying that out. I got to ask that OT piece must be really popular given the, uh, you know, a lot of legacy out there, want that secure big time. Absolutely, uh, and the OT, if you see for decades, it is kept as like very uh, tight access controls. Uh, there are uh, in a Purdue model deployments, you see like layers of these, the PLCs cannot talk to elsewhere. Uh, there is a lot of restrictions around it because those are uh, mission critical. You, it could have impact and implication on the entire business lines. So that's where uh, having zero trust for those networks and IT and OT is also kind of working hand in hand because again, that's the promise of SASE. How do you bring IT, OT, security teams together to define one centralized security posture, one uh, zero trust approach for every connectivity need? That's where we see uh, customers get benefited from. You know, Zscaler, the legacy, I don't say legacy, not that's legacy or anything, but it's your, your brand and well-known core competency, cloud security. You guys are clearly moving in. Jay was at the Super Cloud event in our studios where you're at now in Palo Alto. He said, we're, and I'm paraphrasing now, we're more going to be an AI company. Obviously AI is super hot. It's not new to you guys. I know for a fact, machine learning has been a big part of what Zscaler has been doing for a long, long time. But I have to ask you with respect to zero trust and SASE, leveraging AI and artificial intelligence to answer security. It's been a big discussion. In fact, you know, there's a premium for companies that have AI in their either networking and or their products. We saw that with some recent acquisitions out there. I think it was Mist AI had kind of pioneered this idea of networks and you know, managing based on traffic, kind of smart using AI. I'm sure there's a lot more that you guys are doing in your world. Can you share how in this news, uh, there's an AI angle that you guys use? Can you elaborate on what's, what do you have? If so, what, what does it do to enhance security and reduce complexity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, before I talk about AI, a uh, little bit about the shift you talked in terms of even in the networking space. So in 70s and 80s, you have seen a lot of IBM SNA type of technology was the primary thing which connects networks. Then came IP and TCP IP, changed the whole world in 90s through 2000s and beyond, where everything is IP networking. So what we see and strongly believe is the future of networking is going to change, which is zero trust networking. Right, that's where we believe that every connectivity, uh, 
uh, whether it is a user, machine, doesn't matter, or a workload in the cloud, all of them will have to fundamentally take a zero trust approach in connection, in, in connectivity to anything they are connecting. So the zero trust networking is the next two or three decades thing, what we see as a, as a future uh, going to be. And that's what we are building our product uh, to align to that and, and give customers that uh, transition from where they are into a zero trust networking world. Uh, uh, and AI plays a central role in all of this because the data uh, effectively, these connectivity needs and everything, if you see, every endpoint is, is accessing some data or producing some data. And data is at the center of all of these. And we at Zscaler have uh, hundreds of billions of transactions and logs we have. Uh, and, and the sophistication in AI, particularly in the generative side, uh, what we have seen, to take advantage of that, you cannot work on public data. You need a enterprise specific data. The models have to get trained on their uh, local models, local data. So that's where Zscaler has an advantage of offering capabilities to customer through our data cloud. And a lot of innovations we are doing in terms of predicting the breaches or in terms of identifying uh, sort of a data thefts or um, over uh, privileges and things and so on. So AI has a, a, a amazing advantage, especially when you have a lot of data, which has more context, which you can take advantage so that you can drive a meaningful outcomes. So the, this is a, a interesting overlap of zero trust networking powered by AI is going to transform the way we all uh, exchange information, look at things and connect things and, and so on. So a lot of innovations yeah. coming uh, from Zscaler on that front. You know, I'm just looking at my notes here and I want to bring this up because it is in, was recently in the news Last week, Microsoft's um, nation state actor, Midnight Blizzard, called by other names, depending upon if you're talking to um, Mandiant or CrowdStrike, certainly they were attacking Microsoft's network. They had to reveal this by the new SEC laws. I mentioned that earlier, is top news. Um, companies have to disclose um, now by law uh, after only like four days of what their breach of any hacks. This Microsoft attack uh, was not a vulnerability on any of their products. It was, it was like a, a, an amateur hack. Um, they got in. So again, this is where I see AI and in, in IT operations really moving the ball to the to that part of the world where you know AI should be able to handle this low level yeah. simple hack. I mean, it's an amateur hack. Microsoft got got hoodwinked, so to speak. They never should have been in there. Yeah. This should, have been, this should have been identified. This is, this is kind of the things that we see AI. Is that what you mean by leveraging the AI from, with the data you have? You guys see the patterns. Does that help on the threat detection and the recovery and the backup protection? Absolutely. So that's where, if you see, we have announced some capabilities around Copilot. Uh, the role of AI is more going to be a Copilot rather than the pilot itself. Um, so it is uh, going to assist the SOC uh, the tools uh, or a SOC vendor, a SOC, SOC analyst with, with a lot more information. A, not only just identifying things much quickly, even on the remediation side, even on, on prevention side. Yeah, definitely those uh, security co-pilots alongside uh, uh, the regular uh, threat analysis yeah. is, is going to be a, a big, big uh, wave of change going to happen in that space, yeah. yeah. The network is where the action is. You can see the footprint, so to speak, the packets, we've got to move around. So good, yeah. good to have that zero trust. Um, you know, people are concerned about these co-pilots and like the security. I was, uh, I had a, one of Microsoft's customers tell me, you know, privately at the conference in Seattle that you know, they're turning off all the co-pilot until they can trust it. This becomes kind of, a, I won't say a safety issue, but more, it's more trust. Like, how do I know it's trustful? So as you guys look at the SASE, a zero trust SASE, this kind of plays into um, that new dynamic. How do you guys guarantee or talk to the, the trust issue? Yeah, uh, again, uh, the, the approach, as I said, ours is um, trust but verify, right? Don't have a, a default trust. That's where the traditional firewalls uh, were built on. Trust zone, untrust zone, and you allow kind of, it stays there forever. So fundamentally taking that approach of assuming that every connection could have a breach, 
and how you could contain the breach, how could you minimize the, the, the privileges uh, uh, which are allowed to access a particular resource. Those are the type of things will minimize it and bring the blast radius to significantly smaller. And, and that's, that's the promise of zero trust architecture and not just applying to users, but you need to apply that for every connection in an enterprise, whether it is a, a machine or it's a feedback uh, machine or even a badge reader to enter your office. Everything has to be uh, put in that zero trust principles and thinking would minimize a lot of this. We love your approach with the data. We'll keep an eye on you guys, making sure we keep tracking that. I love that data angle. I think that's a real advantage you guys have. And a lot of companies are moving in that direction to make sure their data is working on their behalf in a very safe, uh, secure way. Okay, since uh, you did a great job on that, <laughs> Naresh, I love to get into the, the plug for the company's uh, release. Take us through um, the product deployment. What's being announced specifically in the news is it hardware? Is it virtual uh, devices, appliances? Is it platform, software, all of the above? Can you explain the product uh, specifically, how it's uh, announced and what you're releasing and how it's deployed? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would start with uh, the one of the follow-up questions you asked earlier on uh, Zscaler being a cloud security company is entering into uh, the space of providing a plug and play appliances. And, and uh, the most important thing here is customer obsession. Uh, be here to our customers all the time and they are connecting uh, to our platform through different endpoints at the edge in, in branch offices, factories, and sites. So when we talked to customers about the zero trust, they asked us to uh, simplify this even at the edge level that is branch offices and factories. And that's where uh, it, customer first. We want to uh, hear them. We partnered with SD Vans prior to this until now, and now it is time for us to really go and uh, uh, bring that zero trust end to end. So as part of this launch, what we are announcing is a, a few plug and play appliances. We call them zero trust devices. There are three flavors of these appliances we are announcing. Uh, ZT400, uh, which is a four port, uh, 200 megabit throughput appliance. A ZT600, which is a six port, 500 megabit throughput appliance, a ZT800, which is an eight port, one gigabit throughput appliance. And for those sites where the needs are more than one gig, we have a solution in form of a virtual machine which can scale and accommodate multiple gig throughput. So all in all, these Z, con Z connector appliances deployed at the edges of the branch offices, factories, and data centers would bring the traffic onto our platform where we can completely replace the need for having a traditional site-to-site VPN-based technology. So that's uh, one advantage. The second benefit is they can take advantage of all the, the comprehensive security capabilities we offer on our cloud today, which is driven by AI. And in this process, we are completely eliminating a routable overlay network because those are the foundational uh, concepts you will see in any site-to-site -site VPN where you have to distribute the routes and so on. All of that brings lateral threat movement and, and challenges. The, the second uh, big uh, thing we are eliminating for customers is attack surface. We are minimizing and reducing the uh, attack surface altogether, and which, which in turn benefit from not having a lateral threat movement altogether. So those are the, the complexities, challenges, and things we eliminate for customers, and customers can really have a simplified and secure connectivity through zero trust approach. They can extend the benefits of what we are offering on the platform, uh, taking advantage of the one true zero yeah. trust SASE platform capabilities. Well, Zscale's been doing extremely well. We've been following the business success as well as the technology success in cloud security. Naresh, thanks for coming on. And again, I think SD-WAN is being disrupted. You know, obviously you got security risks and more complexity as you know, distributed computing evolves to the edge. You got a lot more CPU, GPU, TPUs, more data coming. I think yeah. we're going to see a lot more people looking at the internet of things market as just internet and it's going to be refactored. Uh, great to get your news. I guess in summary, what's the, how would you say the, the bumper sticker would be for this news? If you have to summarize this in a sentence, this news and what it means for customers in the industry, how would you um, put a bumper sticker on this news? Yeah, AI powered SSC plus zero trust SD-WAN is equal to zero trust SASE. And all enterprises are looking for that and we are very 
proud and happy and excited to announce this Zero Trust SASE capabilities for our customers. All right, Naresh Kumar, VP and GM of Product Management at Zscale. He's got the keys to the kingdom in the product management side. Thanks for sharing and good luck with uh, this business. We'll be tracking you and thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much, John. It was very exciting conversation and looking forward to talk to you again. Okay, thanks everyone. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier here in Massachusetts studio, talking with our remote studio in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.